So we are in Sicily with Etna Rosso from um, our friends at Grassi. Um, so this is Norella Mascalese, which is one of Nick's, well, I love it too, but one of, or maybe is Nick's favorite red wine. Um, we have been a little bit heavy on Italy lately, but I just, A, love their wines, used to live there for a long time. B, really feel like they know how to do summer, even though some of these are heavier wines. Um, so I like the idea of having them during like the spring summer months and be they're good. So <laughs> what else can I say? Um, so Norella Mascalese and where this guy is and what he's making honestly is very similar um, to the way that Frank Cornelison works. So if you're all about the hype and Frank, um, obviously he doesn't have the same hype or the cool labels and bottles like Frank does, but the price for value of this wine, I find he's so much higher. Um, not that I don't love Frank's wines. I think they're great. It's just, you know, they're really hyped. So let's dive into it. Um, the color is gorgeous, very light. Um, Norella Mascalese is quite a light grape. Uh, it depends on what you do with it, but if you're like a Pinot Noir fan, a lot of times this is a direction that people like to go, especially if it's lightly extracted. And this one's pretty lightly extracted. Um, so on the nose, it's just so light and delicate. It's um, like floral, don't ask me what kind, but like springy red fruits, like cranberries, like the lighter ones, a little bit of like herbs, maybe like lighter herbs though, not like sage, more like uh, dill. No, it's not dill. It's like Oregano, there you go. Italian spice. <laughs> um, on, the, on the bottom, it does get a little bit deeper. It's kind of like red cherries, but we're still in the red category down here. A little bit salty even. <sighs> Very fresh, like freshly picked cherries. Let's try it. Mm. Lovely. So it's actually more I would say earthy on the palate than like I got tons of fruit um, on the nose. I guess also got herbs and stuff, but like it's almost like a little bit more like forest flory on the palate, a little bit more like mushroomy. The um, fruits are still there. I would say I lost a bit of like the uh, uh, like the herbs that I was talking about earlier in some of that fruit, but uh, that's where I feel like it makes a lot of sense that people would compare this to like a Pinot Noir because it does it's light and fresh and it does have some of that earthiness to it as well um it's just it's just gorgeous it's light <laughs> um but it has enough depth like it's it's almost medium bodied I would say it's like at the door of medium bodied and it has like a nice tannic structure it's integrated um it's a little bit what's chewy is not the right word it's a little bit I don't know like rustic maybe is what I would say um, so with all of that in mind, I love the idea of this with like your cheese plates, um, your pastas, like I would not go hard on meats. You could have some meat in here, but I would like, you could have a meatball maybe, but I wouldn't go hard on like grilled foods with it or whatever. I would definitely focus more on like your risottos or you could even put it, I wouldn't love putting it with like white meat for sure. Probably not so much with fish unless you're like doing something kind of interesting with them, like putting them in a red sauce or something. Um, like pulpo with the red sauce that they have in Spain, that type of thing. Just really tasty, great by itself. Um, but yeah, think about your pastas and your typical Italian dishes and put it with that and you'll be very, very happy. Enjoy. <laughs> 